Good morning, Iowa. From the Five Talents Financial Management Group Studios, I'm Scott Casper, and he's Nick Learhoff. Welcome to St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, the mental health show. Join us as we talk about a topic that many of our fellow Iowans face every day, mental illness. We feature the expertise of doctors, therapists, and specialists who understand the challenges we face. As a reminder, our show airs two times from 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Saturday mornings on Iowa's Hope 940 and online at talktherapytmhs.com. We invite you to join in the conversation on this very important life topic. And remember, Iowa, we're listening right here on Hope 940. Big topic this week, dealing with stress during the holidays. And Nick, this is... um, Stress can can uh, manifest itself in so many ways, at least how you deal with it. Is it, it can be a very big negative for some. Yes, it can be very difficult, especially somebody who's struggling with mental illness and or, you know, are in recovery or maybe they're in early sobriety. You know, um, it's, a, it's a really hard time. And I would say it's probably even harder this year than most just with everything going on, um, you know, with uh, the reduced, um, you know, gatherings right. and all that push for that. And, uh, you know, when you talk about just being in early your early recovery, you know, you talk about the gatherings. Typically, mm-hmm. it's, it's you know some sort of alcohol related or, or family that are that are drinking who right. don't maybe have an issue or maybe aren't uh, as not facing their issue. Yeah, not facing their issue, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so it's just it's just a hard time. You so know? the holiday season brings guests to your home sometimes, or maybe you're going and traveling to somebody else's home. But it also brings unwelcome guests, and those guests are stress and depression. And it's no wonder the holiday presents a dizzying array of demands, cooking meals, shopping, baking, cleaning, entertaining, just to name a few. And if coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 is spreading in your community, you may be feeling additional stress, or you may be worrying about your and your loved one's health. You also may be feeling stressed, sad, or anxious because your holiday plans may look different during the COVID-19 pandemic, and for most of you, I'm sure it will. But with some practical tips, you can minimize the stress that accompanies the holidays. You may even end up enjoying the holidays more than you thought you would. To discuss this and so much more within the next hour, our guest returns from New Heights Counseling, noted counselor and therapist, Jim Willwording. Good morning, Jim. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. I'm doing really well today. Have we, did we intro the, the, the I, you know, I, th- I thought long and hard about this, okay? And knowing how it's affecting my family, uh, my father at 89 to be here in just a few a few days, and uh, my wife, my mother-in-law at 98, uh, my kids, my new grandson. I mean, it's, it's affecting uh, people in the immediacy, but those are on the outliers, if you will, in relationships that, that I enjoy. Um, I'm not seeing very much of now, let alone during the holidays when we're being encouraged to gather in smaller groups and, or not gather at all. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I think you you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's partly, I think it's the expectation of the holidays. I Mm. mean, there's the expectation that we should be at all of these things and all the places and gathering. Um, you know, and I, I want to always remind folks that my, you know, our family members are, are present on the planet all through the year. So, you know, we can probably take some time to get to see them on a regular basis, but that stress of the holidays, I think really highlights because typically this is the time kind of as Nick pointed out of larger gatherings and those gatherings oftentimes involve, um, you know, maybe some unhealthy activities for some family members uh, that are not good for folks who are in early recovery or folks who have mental health concerns. Um, you know, that expectation of gathering in large groups may trigger anxiety. Uh, missing family may trigger depression. So uh, the holidays tend to bring out all the best or the worst of lots of folks. Yeah, I mean, it, you look at even some family rituals and different things where maybe mm-hmm. they get together and they always have their eggnog uh, that's spiced up a little bit, if you will, you know, um, or their social gatherings that, you know, friends and family that they maybe get together every year at a certain time frame and go, uh, you know, go drink or go do different things. And so, 
you know, it, it's it's part of those things that that can cause that uh, anxiety or somebody that's that's you know in recovery or in early sobriety just trying to navigate those waters, um, you know, and be able to to handle those situations or or be able to bow out, you know, and say, okay, maybe not this year, you know, uh, I, I need to kind of gain my legs or my my recovery strength, if you will, and so it, it's it's just it can create a. Um, uh, uh, triggers upon triggers, depending on um, what's all going on with the individual. So I, I do want to uh, touch base, Jim. And, and you know, when you and I were first talking, and I know you and Nick as well, but there is some data out there, uh, specifically on the experiences of what we just went through—the reduced Thanksgiving, right? And what are some of those that you would like to express or share with the uh, listeners today? You know, it, it's interesting that there's kind of a push-pull in folks' experience of this, uh, I don't know if you want to say because of the mandate or just because people are encouraged to get in smaller gatherings. Push-pull is, uh, you know, a lot of folks are missing family when they were you know, sitting at home by themselves or with their immediate family. And thinking about Thanksgiving's past, but the, the other side of it is, um, I think, you know, there's a, there's a significant number of folks who've kind of found like, oh, this is a lot simpler. Mm-hmm. This, you know, I can manage this a lot better. And, you know, maybe it's time to start some new family rituals that uh, are, are smaller or more intimate or, you know, less hectic. So, you know, it is kind of an interesting time just in terms of uh, maybe rediscovering simplicity as an option uh, that's, that this presents at the same time that it seems to be taking away things that it, it puts the option out there for new things. You know, I, I, I've been in doing my study on the topic. And by the way, folks, remember every show is different. Uh, there may be a couple times we repeat a topic during the year. Um, uh, for example, Alzheimer's is coming up. Um, I'm going to be wanting to talk about Alzheimer's. It's something I had to face dead on and I had no idea how to handle it realistically had no idea and did i self-medicate you bet i did because it was it was out of my hands and i felt i felt it was uh out of my control and um i'm a control guy i like to be in somewhat anyway somewhat right. control but during the holidays stress and depression our topic today uh can really hurt your health right jim yeah there there is a, a lot of uh stress related illnesses um I mean, when you when you think about <clears throat> excuse me, when you think about the the effects of stress on the body, and, and you know, the more we understand kind of the stress response in our brain and body, uh, you know, our body under stress gets ready to either fight, flee, or freeze. Right? We're either going to fight the lion, we're going to freeze and hide from the lion, or we're going to try to run away. And so our body really gets ready for all that. And the side effect of it is, um, you know, uh, our bloodstream releases we release all of the energy into our bloodstream if it doesn't get burned off then it turns into you know arterial plaque and oh, wow. you know gastric ulcers come because our digestive system slows down our immune system gets suppressed i mean when you think about it uh, when you're under stress um, some people like to do a lot of it but you know, if you've got a lot going on the house doesn't get cleaned and that's kind of what our body does under stress it just says you know shut down all of the quote-unquote non-essential things and and just focus on whatever this danger or stress perceived situation is ahead of us. And so what ends up happening is then if we don't work that stress off or if we don't find a way to, to manage it in a healthy way, that's where we end up getting digestive problems right. and you know stress headaches and all that kind of stuff just because that's what our body does with stress. When, when stress is at its peak, though, I mean, and this is key for me, when I feel stressed, right, um, I have to stop and, and, and think and try to regroup and try to put myself in the position of everybody else. So I have an emotional connect with, with others, but when it's at its peak, isn't it really hard to stop and regroup? Yeah, yeah that is kind of the ironic part about it is when we need it the most is when it's least accessible to us, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, we need, we need to do that regroup. Uh, but you know, our emotional brain, so to speak, doesn't allow us to think logically like, Oh, what do I need next? Um, so I think that's where healthy habits come in as much as anything else. You know, once things are kind of in a healthy routine, you know, then they're accessible even, you know, when I'm not thinking rationally, when I'm in my emotional state or whatever, 
um, things like good, good, healthy eating, healthy habits, relating with others, uh, getting good exercise, good sleep. You know, if that's part of my routine, then I have a lot more stress resilience when I need it. That is one of the things that St. Gregory's does and has recognized so well, so much so that St. Gregory's, when they opened in Baird, Iowa, they didn't just open up a recovery center. They bought a gym. They oh, bought yeah. a school. Oh, yeah. I mean, talk about being invested in the community. I think you guys are the single largest property owner out there, <laughs> uh, and it may be, but there is a gym there for a reason, and Absolutely. it's mandatory that uh, people participate because it does um, dissolve stress and the stress sores because your body becomes uh, healthier and exhausted in a natural way. You want to, you want to sleep. You, you feel, uh, I think, less guilty about taking a nap or sleeping. Um, at least I did. But I, I think St. Gregory's really has got their finger on what, you know, physical uh, activity can really do what benefit is, you know, lies behind the curtain. You know, it, it's just about adding different things to the toolbox, you know, as mm -hmm. far as, you know, it's not a matter of when, you know, um, if stress happens, it's when it happens. Right. So how do we deal with those situations? What are the things that we can put, uh, in our plan, you know, in our toolbox to be able to help manage, help, uh, work through and help resolve some of the, you know, as our bodies get uh, pent up and get anxious and stressed out, you know, it's, it's going for a long walk. It's take, it's being with family and incorporating them in there and, and, you know, and, you know, maybe taking the family goes for a hike or does something fun over the holidays that that's going to keep them active. That's going to help kind of reduce that stress. And, you know, I always think of my family get togethers, um, you know, at my house. I'm like, one of the things I think that people struggle with when you talk about the holidays is having this picture perfect, Everything no is, is, is just needs to be a certain way or there's yeah. a, a image in, in the family's mind of like, this is how it should go, you know, and they, we create these uh, unrealistic expectations. We create it's a this, wonderful life. Yeah, it's, it's, this is how <laughs> this has to go and it has to be perfect. Otherwise, this thing is just isn't going to work. All right, we got to take a quick time out on the show. You're listening to uh, Talk Therapy, the mental health show brought to you by St. Gregory's and our friends at Five Talents Financial Management Group and uh, our guest, uh, making a successful return. Noted counselor and therapist Jim Wilwording from New Heights Counseling. You can find them in Urbandale at uh, 2335 70th Street. Their phone number right now, I'll tell you, but it's also a resource on our uh, drop down tab on our website at uh, talktherapytmhs.com. His phone number is 515 599 3255. A variety of therapists and uh, counselors are available. Uh, for you, and this may be a time that you want to think ahead and try to plan for what you have experienced in the past and how you're going to deal with it from this day forward. Jim Wilwording, he'll continue with us, and we hope you do too. This is Talk Therapy on Hope 940. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. There's more with Nick Learhoff and Scott Casper right here on Iowa's 940 for St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, the mental health show. Iowa, we're listening. I came to St. Gregory very reluctantly at my all-time worst, physically, emotionally, and mentally. But I gave my best effort to these new things in my life as I saw hope in this complete approach. I'm at the point now that I feel my strongest and best ever, physically, mentally, and emotionally. I felt quite certain God was orchestrating everything. St. Gregory Recovery Center. Recovery starts here. RelevantRadio.com slash St. Gregory. All right, welcome back to the show. St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, the mental health show. Stress, depression, and the holidays. How are we dealing with it? How are you dealing with it? Tips for coping. Our guest, Jim Wilwording. And I want to tell you, New Heights Counseling Resources is there for you. A variety of professionals can answer most uh, problems and can help you deal with life's no, it can help you deal with whatever life is throwing at you. Okay. Jim Wilwording rejoins the program. Jim, thank you for staying through the break. Uh, let's talk about stress, depression, and the holidays. What are some of the tips that our listeners might uh, employ in coping? You know, my, my first uh, tip for coping with the holidays, uh, especially holiday stress, um, is just kind of accept what is. Um, I know that sounds very, you know, 
cliche and it gets thrown around a lot, but, but I think so often what happens that causes even more stress or um, you know, even the depression part really is my expectations are something different than what is really happening, right? You know, <clears throat> 35 years, Christmas, somebody's, you know, had an argument about politics. Well, let's not expect that that probably isn't going to happen. Okay. Mm-mm. Except what is, right? I mean, it, 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 try to lower the expectation to at least match reality of, of past experiences rather than think like this one is going to be so magically different just because I want it to be. Um, you know, and then the other piece is, you know, really find the way to value the connections that are. Mm. Right? Um, so often we get fixated on who's not at the holidays or what's not happening or, you know, who, who we're missing out on or who shunned us this year or whatever, that we miss the, the real connection that's right there in front of us and, you know, enjoy the people that are there. So it's important to acknowledge your feelings, right? Yeah. I mean, I think in all things, right, we all have the right to our feelings and we have the right to express them in, in appropriate and healthy ways. Um, and so um, you know, how, how we acknowledge them, Put them forward. I say, look at it, acknowledge it, let it go. Just like watching clouds on a summer day, you know, we look at one and we say, oh, there's Mickey Mouse, you know, <laughs> oh, well, there's a giraffe. I mean, we don't try to make it be Mickey Mouse the entire length of the sky. We just say, well, there it is. And that's what it is. And let it move go. on to the next. And we can do the same with our thoughts and our feelings. Like, yep, I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling excited or whatever. Um, and then acknowledge it and, and move on and, and allow the next thing to come. You know, I think that's, you know, uh, a pretty wonderful thing that you're talking about there with just acknowledging your feelings and just the idea that that as those things come along, I mean, it's it's being able to have that awareness of when our, we start getting off tilt a little bit, you know, uh, oh, right. and being able to, A, have the awareness or the acknowledgement, the, the consciousness to be able to catch those things. Then, like you said, um, Jim, is, is just having an understanding that that those feelings are coming and it's okay but then how are we going to move forward how are we going to to um to you know forget those things as they come up i mean i don't know what 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 tips or or i guess in relation to even that as far as how to help people kind of overcome those those triggering thoughts and things of that nature well you know i think uh, part of what we confront when we do that is uh you know what's the family rules right when it comes to feelings and when it comes to, you know, expression, I, mean, I think we need to be aware of that, 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 um, especially when we're talking about folks who are in recovery and even more so early recovery, you know, part of those family rules start to create unhealthy dynamics. Like, well, we don't talk about feelings or, you know, it's okay to be really, really angry, but you know, nobody should be crying at Christmas. Um, uh, you know, and those kind of things to say, how do we, you know, again, acknowledge, but also, um, put forward some, some healthy rules for expression. And that's where the family, I think, can get involved in, in helping is, you know, how to, how to handle families as a whole, make it okay for folks to, to deal with their feelings or to express their feelings. All right. So I, 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 there's something that's an underlying uh, current for me in this conversation that there are folks out there and I don't care how old you are dealing with the holidays people have a high expectation of what the holiday will bring. Okay. If you are feeling lonely or isolated, uh, you need to be seeking out some sense of community, uh, religious or, or, uh, perhaps some social events or communities. Uh, some of you have websites or online support groups, social media sites or virtual events, and don't lose yourself in the technology folks. And that's, isn't that key, Jim? You, you, you don't, drown in the technology that it's a tool it's not the end all be all right it, 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 there can be some support and companionship there but it, it's not really everything is it right uh, you know and I, and I appreciate what nick what you said a few minutes ago about you know you need to have a full toolbox uh. and technology is, is one tool to use and, and as long as we use it as a tool but not make it our only tool um and not think that it's going to you know going to take care of everything, but use the tools that are available, right? 
technology as a tool that we can use to connect to people when we can't be physically present. Um, you know, friends groups or support groups or, you know, some kind of, you know, connection with community, as you were saying, Scott, that um, is, is important when we can't be with family. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and so I think it's, it's about having a full toolbox that, you know, like Nick keeps telling us about. So during the holidays, and I don't want to interrupt there, Nick, I no, just I want to put a cap around this because my father, uh, again, will be 89 this month. His next door neighbor in assisted living where they uh, live died right after dinner, went upstairs, sat down in his chair, uh, fell asleep and died. Okay. Uh, but that is an amazing, uh, hole in my father's social life. His friendship with him was, uh, amazing. And it hit my dad like a ton of bricks. And it, I mean, sure. The guy lived literally next door on the same floor, but they did a lot of community things together and they were each other's friend. And it just so happened to happen during, it just so happened it just happened during the holidays. I guess I'm using too many words, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is I noticed this and I noticed how my father then regressed and took more naps, uh, to, I think, try to try to maybe escape from the emotion of it. Right. Jim, am I describing that correctly? Well, I, I, I would say yes. Um, I don't, I don't know if escape from the emotion as much as just, I always remind my clients that, emotional work takes physical energy. And so, um, you know, it sounds like your father was experiencing that depression that comes with grief and loss. And, you know, and I think sometimes it's really about also acknowledging the physical toll that emotional work takes. You know, if I'm sad about something, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, yep, I'm probably going to need more sleep. You know, I'll probably need a nap or two. I'll probably, you know, sleep longer than I used to. Um, you know, if that if that remains the case, if that if that continues on for more than you know a couple of weeks, or the feelings aren't on the surface, but I'm still feeling those physical things, and that's kind of a sign where we start getting into more of the clinical depression piece of, you know, am I just I'm, now I've lost interest or lost energy, and, and that might be a symptom that's worthy of paying attention to and getting some professional opinion on. You, but also just to say, you know, physical or emotional work takes physical energy. So pamper yourself, uh, you know, afford yourself those naps, um, take more time to relax. And it's okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is okay. There's going to be loss, especially in this time of COVID, right? There's going to be loss in every one of us is being touched in some way, shape or form. Well, and I think that scenario in itself, right, where even even to, to kind of skip pages, I guess, a little bit, but like somebody who's who's trying to find sobriety, right? A lot of times they have uh, friends, social friends or friends that they've been hanging out with forever. And that's that's the common thread is drinking. But but that's their social piece. Right. right. So when when somebody's trying to find sobriety, trying to get gain recovery and, and stay there, you know, a lot of times they're separating themselves from those friends, those friends to be able to maintain that sobriety. So I think of that scenario uh, with your father's like he lost that that friend that was his companion during the holidays or was able to talk to when things right. got, got down, you know, and I, I think it's almost like a, a, a metaphor in a certain sense for those folks that are, are trying to find sobriety that are basically, basically may have lost some, a social group or a few friends that they always were able to hang out with because they didn't feel like they could hang out with them because it may, could possibly lead to a lapse of some sort, you know? So I, what are the things that, that, that group can do, your father can do to help fill that void of find that community, as you talk about, find those, those social, um, social friends and, and those groups that they can be a part of to help kind of ease, ease some of that, I guess you'd say, I wouldn't say ease the paint, but, um, to be able to, to find those, those, those new sources of friendship, to find those new sources of camaraderie and whatnot. And I always think of, of community service in a certain sense that what we talk about is, is, getting involved with the community, giving back to others and finding joy in helping others and donate and to a charity, donate to a charity. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, uh, the soup kitchens and the, the meals on wheels and the different things of just bringing joy, bringing smiles to people's faces. 
Um, and, and being able to rely on that is maybe even one of those things that we talk about within the toolbox as far as being able to get outside ourselves and, and still be able to, to be a part of something, a part of a community. Stress, depression, and the holidays tips for coping. Our guest, Jim Wilwording from uh, New Heights Counseling Resources in Urbandale. We appreciate you tuning into the program. We're going to take our next commercial time out as we come to you live from the five talents financial management group studios it's scott casper and nick learhoff our topic today is stress during the holidays can, can you imagine that man it's a perfect time oh yeah i was gonna think maybe we should do this show in august but no we had to save it for the holidays <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you tuning in we do we invite you to stick around we'll be back after the short time out as our show continues this is talk therapy St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, The Mental Health Show, will continue after this commercial timeout. The folks at St. Gregory were vital in helping me to get my brother into rehab. They were not only supportive of him, but of our whole family. They truly saved all of our lives with their love and kindness. Because of the hard work they helped my brother do, we regained a valued, healthy, and incredible part of our family. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Relevantradio.com slash St. Gregory, setting the new standard for recovery. All right, welcome back to the show. Stress, depression, and the holidays. What we're talking about here on St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, the mental health show from the Five Talents Financial Management Group Studios. Our guest, he returns, Jim Wilwording, New Heights Counseling Resources in Urbandale, uh, the holidays, uh, it's a real challenge for so many of us and myself included. Uh, there are things about the holidays I don't like. I love the holidays, but there are things within that, you know, there's the subset, right? Um, setting aside differences, sticking to a budget. Can we, can we touch base on sticking with the budget? Cause you brought up <laughs> a film, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for Christmases, uh, when you talk about sticking to a budget, I just, when we talked about that, giving. you know, off, off the line there for a second you know and gift giving it, it brought me back to the, the movie four christmases where they are going back to all the in-laws christmases and the idea that you know basically they were going back to this christmas there was a ten dollar limit on spending for gifts and the family the, the people that were coming back vince vaughn i think it was and reese witherspoon they came back and they they brought like huge you know hundred dollar gifts and <laughs> basically blew everybody else out of the water so there was some angst amongst the family because the mom and dad of the of the kids they're giving gifts maybe got them a, a, a pack of bubble gum and you know a matchbox car instead you know so it it, it created this this um you know situation where the, the family was upset it created a, a, a fight you know just not understanding what the expectations were a and b somebody just not sticking to the budget and trying to you know one up uh, and it was the, in the phone in the film it was an, an accident but trying to one up the other so Jimmy, is that is that uh, common? You know, I I think that is uh, pretty common, especially among families, right? I mean, um, there is this kind of unspoken and sometimes spoken pressure to say, you know, I've I've made it, I've arrived, I've you know, I'm doing better than my brother or whatever. Um, and I think this is oftentimes that's where this whole you know almost competitive nature of gift giving starts to creep in. And, and I think you, you nailed it there, Nick, with, you know, my mantra of let's have good, healthy, you know, let's have spoken expectations rather than unspoken expectations, you know, realistic expectations. Yeah. And, uh, and to, to bring that in, in terms of if we're exchanging gifts or, you know, sharing gifts that, that it's not like, you know, four Christmases and, you know, let's just try to wow everybody with, you know, everything um because i think that sets up uh folks who <clears throat> have some trouble with you know, maybe they're having financial trouble i mean especially i mean we keep coming back to and i think it's important to come back to you know the folks who are in their early recovery well mm -hmm. we you know addiction among other things knocks out bank accounts right i mean mm -hmm. it, it, it you know, if somebody's in early recovery they're they're probably not in that financial place to compete in the gift giving. Um, but because of the nature of addiction and, and self-worth, they might find that pressure to say, Oh, I need to show them how good I'm doing and, you know, and overstand the budget, which then can create its own stress and depression and in the whole cycle. You know, I, I've, I've found that I have given 
The the biggest gift I've ever given or gotten is a car. Oh wow! I gave one of my employees a car. Nice. And I knew he needed it. I knew he would enjoy it. I didn't necessarily need anything in response to it, but I did it. Mm -hmm. And was it the best decision I could have ever made? Probably not. I mean, it's rather extravagant, right? (laughs) It's rather grandiose, but at the same time, (laughs) I didn't need anybody else to know about it. My wife found out probably a year after I did this (laughs) and she goes, you did what now? And I said, I (laughs) gave him a car. And it was more than anything. It wasn't a seasonal gift. It wasn't a holiday gift. It was a gift of appreciation for a job well done over an extended period of time when he worked for under, you know, he could have easily made more money somewhere else. But it was my uh, way of saying, hey, we have arrived at this point. Here's this benefit that I would like to give to you. And he was grateful. But I didn't expect anything. And perhaps therein lies the problem. Our expectation of what we give, right, mm-hmm. is a uh, sometimes not in line with what that individual is, is willing to extend back to us in terms of gratitude. And, and that is, that's part of the holiday issue for me is that there's, there's never, you can't go back and match last year and expect this year to be the same mm-hmm. uh, because there's a whole lot of things that change the dynamic for me changes each and every year. There's some things that are similar, but more likely than not, the, the, you know, the landscape is constantly changing. It's like a stream running through a field that it will look different five years from now than it does today. And that's what life is. Life for me is a season of changes, but then it's an overall change. It's a much bigger change and that we don't expect. And sometimes we're not willing to accept it. And that's part of it, right, Jim? You have to be willing to accept. So acknowledge, you reach out, you're realistic. You try to set aside any differences that you have with family members. Uh, You try to stick with a budget so you're not stressed about that. But what about planning? What about planning ahead? Is it possible that planning ahead can be um, beneficial to to those that are experiencing a high level of stress? Well, I I think uh, having a good again, realistic plan is a good coping skill or coping strategy for a lot of folks. Um, I, I always have to put the caveat because if somebody is struggling with anxiety, then planning becomes trying to live in the future and make the event happen before it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think it's, you know, it's about back to that old Boy Scout motto of be prepared. I can prepare for this. I can plan. I can set aside, you know, maybe it's, I mean, a lot of places still offer the old Christmas club savings account. Maybe I'm just putting a little bit of money in every paycheck or every month right. in, into my Christmas account. So when Christmas comes, it's not like I have to put everything on the card or whatever. Um, but you know, I think I think planning ahead and, and planning ahead for what are going to be the dynamics. Um, mm-hmm. you know, family dynamic stress is, is also something that I think we need to be prepared for and you know, and look at realistically as well. Um, so, you know, it, it, and when we talk about planning ahead and, and it was just kind of a little bit of a, a piggyback on kind of what we were talking about before with expectations. I mean, that's, that's a big part of it. I mean, if, if, if there, the communication isn't there where people are coming into a social gathering with different expectations of what's supposed to happen and what, 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 normal supposed to be like, I guess, in a certain sense. I mean, then you take it to that early recovery or somebody who's, who's early in sobriety is like, and we talk about this with people going home when they leave treatment. It's what, it, what's the family's expectations for you and what are your expectations for them? Because it's, it's a two way street. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it could be <laughs> completely different towns. Oh yeah. Well, and then, and, but think about that as, is from our standpoint in treatment, it's like, it's better to get that stuff out now and gain an understanding now then you go home and you get blindsided because, you know, mom and dad are expecting you to drop a UA and every, you know, three days or whatever. And you're like, whoa, 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 I didn't, I didn't sign up for this, no. you know, you know, and so it's, it's, you know, getting back to the family gatherings of having um, set up those expectations or clear communication about, Hey, so we know, uh, you know, so-and-so is coming to the, to the party tonight. So, Hey, everybody, you know, we're not, you know, all drinks, stay home. You know, um, hey, we know so-and-so is coming to the party and maybe they struggle with a, an eating disorder or something like that. So we're going to do small, snacky things. Small we're not going to do a huge, a huge meal or anything yeah. like that. And just trying, idea. just trying to have that plan ahead 
where, um, you know, you can take all factors and things into consideration. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's having that, that, that emergency plan too. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling triggered. What do I do now? Who do I call? Maybe it's planning ahead and taking a buddy, you know, to I, the, I, I have an idea. Oh, go for it. Yeah. You ready, Jim? Yep. You ready for this? I am ready. I am ready, Scott. When you are in kindergarten, you are encouraged to bring a sleeping mat. Mm -hmm. All right. Why shouldn't we? Because many times we overindulge in food. Uh, we don't necessarily eat healthy. We suffer stress and guilt because of that. But why couldn't we bring a sleeping mat and just curl up for a little bit and take a half hour nap, a little cat nap and, and start over again. So you're not, it's, you're, it's like taking, you're not going to eat the whole pie. Right. Okay. Just take a piece of pie and then take a nap and then wake up and it's turkey time or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Just take small bites of the holidays, take small bites of the relationships that you're a part of and, and everybody can participate. And, and I think that's a healthier way to look at it. At least it is for me. So folks don't let the holidays become a free for all. Okay. Cause that's exactly what I've seen happen. And that could be very, very disastrous to your mental health. And that's what we talk about. So how about this, Jim? Try deep breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, that type of thing. And Danny, I'm going to ask Danny uh, real quick. Danny, how much time do we have to the end of the show? End of the show. Is it three 20, minutes? Oh, 27 or 27 and some change. 27 minutes. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. But you've got a couple of minutes okay, thank left you. of this I, segment. That's just the next break. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, treading on uh, uh, Jim's time. But I want to get back to my list. Um, get plenty of sleep. Include regular physical activity in your daily routine. Try deep breathing exercises. I found that to be very, very beneficial to me. Meditation, yoga. I'm not very good at that because my mind is constantly racing. But man, oh, man. If I can slow it down, mm -hmm. uh, and take a breath, avoid excessive tobacco, alcohol, or drug use. Well, I've knocked out a few of those things, but, um, I'm going, I'm going to continue to, I'm going to, Hey, life is a work in progress. Work in progress. All right. There's never going to be a perfect day. Yep. Some are more perfect than others, but from my estimation, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, there. I guess it's how you wake up in the morning and your expectations of that day. Does the day meet your expectations? And further, do you meet the expectations of the day? Think about that. We're going to take a quick time out. Jim Wilwording sticks with us on this show. We love it. Five Talents Financial Management Group Studios. It's Scott Casper and Nick Learhoff. St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, the mental health show, continues on Iowa's Hope 940. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. There's more with Nick Learhoff and Scott Casper right here on Iowa's 940 for St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, the mental health show. Iowa, we're listening. I can't say enough about the staff at St. Gregory's who seem especially gifted to work in this field. They were so helpful and encouraging and will always have my gratitude. I made some very good new friends, a couple of whom I probably would not have made it through those beginning days without. Everyone and the programs at St. Gregory seem designed and placed in my life by God's perfect plan. RelevantRadio.com slash St. Gregory. RelevantRadio.com slash St. Gregory. Welcome back to the show, Talk Therapy, the mental health show brought to you by St. Gregory's, the recovery center of choice, by the way. Uh, and Jim Wilwording, our guest, New Heights. And I tell you what, we look at the holidays and we look at stress uh, it's so important that we have this conversation. I think we'll probably have this conversation several times throughout every year because when we don't talk about something, we ignore the obvious. And that obvious thing is that we are human and we are human. The human condition, I think pretty much states that we are all going to experience similar things at different times. It's not always going to be the same time when you go into uh, rehabilitation, for example, uh, for, for the most part, you're probably pretty bad off. You're probably pretty sick. You're probably at the lowest point. And I hesitate to ever use a, the old, you know, phrase of being at the bottom of the barrel mm -hmm. because, um, how many people actually have been in a barrel and, and, you know, made it there. No, but, but when you get out of treatment, what are the expectations of your family, of your loved ones, your parents, your wife, your husband, whatever, 
Um, Jim, those aren't always in align with each other, are they? They are not. I mean, I often tell folks, you know, about you know, when we talk about family systems, especially family systems of recovery, you know, so much of what happens when somebody's in an active addiction or, or even in, you know, in an untreated mental health situation, um, the family really starts to create uh, r- rituals, routines, activities that kind of work around the elephant in the room. They start to really develop all of these, you know, approaches to the to the addict or to the to the person uh, that kind of make their addiction or their mental health issues kind of not effective in the family uh, doing the best they can but then what happens is the person goes away they get to treatment they get find recovery or they get their medication or they get treatment and come back in a healthier place and they find like there's no place for them in the family because everybody has learn so long to work around them and right. not count on them as being reliable. And then, you know, that ends up saying to the person kind of subconsciously is the only place that you are, are you fit here is as an active addict or, an, a, a, you know, um, in your depression or your anxious state or whatever. Um, and so that tends to kind of put the person in the, in the choosing place of either I need to, maybe walk away from this stress for a little while, or, uh, or I'm going to end up taking my place at the table, which is as a, you know, the one who's you know, intoxicated or the one who's high or whatever, um, and causing the scene. So it's okay to take a breath. It is absolutely okay. And you mentioned breathing, deep breathing earlier. And I All always right. remind folks, you know, we breathe hopefully 12, 12 to 20 times a minute. So uh, stepping aside and taking three really deep ones is, is as natural as anything. So you know, I don't need to take 20 minutes of meditation if I'm feeling stressed. Just take two minutes to step away in a quiet place, take three big, huge, deep breaths, and that usually is a good reset for um, at least in the moment. So. All right, so folks, here we do. All right, here's what we do. We take a breath. Make some time for yourself. Find an activity that you enjoy. Uh, take a break by yourself. It's okay. It's okay. The holiday doesn't mean you got to spend time uh, with everybody in your family all at once. Spending just 15 minutes alone without, uh, say, uh, any kind of distraction may refresh you enough to handle everything that you need to do. Find something that reduces stress, uh, that reduces stress by clearing your mind, slowing your breathing, And restoring that inner calm, that inner peace is key to dealing with stress and dealing with your family and dealing with yourself. And don't forget, there's power in prayer. Mm -hmm. That meditation can come in a variety of different ways. I was just going to say that. What? Yeah, I was just going to talk about, you know, we we talk a lot about prayer, meditation, Mm -hmm. and you know, through meditation, right? So your brain, you're trying to move your brain from higher wavelengths to lower wavelengths to help create more time between thoughts, slow those things down so you can have more thought or more time between thought and action, right? So that way you can kind of minimize that impulsiveness. And prayer is one of those ways that you can do that and start focusing uh, or realigning what you're focusing on, right? So we'll talk to people about just start with what you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. Put some perspective in your own mind as far as, you know, it's easy to focus on the have-nots. And we think we uh, Jim was talking about this earlier as far as, you know, uh, well, who's who's not here? What don't we have? All that kind of stuff. And and that's just going to start you off on the wrong foot. As, I mean, being being grateful and thankful and using prayer to, to, talk, to, to talk to God or talk to oneself was just like, man, you know, Today was a good day. Yep. You know, um, and I have such a, a beautiful family. I have, I have my health. I have all these different things and it can create a, a, an entirely different way of viewing, um, the, the world as it is. You Boy, know? did I pick a good cause, huh? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> out of the park. Nicky boy. Nice job out of you. Um, I think it's important, Jim, to just, just take a breath. So in, kind of encapsulating everything we've been talking about uh stress can come in a variety of different ways Uh, how we deal with it is individually different Um, recognizing that others around you may be in a worse place than you are and offering assistance to them if even if it's only just an ear a phone call a helping hand 
uh, can sometimes be as beneficial to you as it is to the person you're intending to help. So the holidays can be a lot of things to a lot of folks and to many out there, it means loneliness. And I want you to know that we're here for you 365 days a year. Check out past shows, go back and listen to a variety of, uh, doesn't have to deal with you specifically, but know there's somebody in your life that is dealing with those topics because that is exactly what this program is about. The program is about us. It's about people. It's about Iowans experiencing life and all of its challenges. And that's one of the things that Jim Wilwording is offering you that safe Harbor that, uh, I mean, let's face it. He studied this and it has become his life's work. Jim, tell folks how they can be in touch with you at New Heights Counseling and what they can expect, the type of things that you offer. So we uh, we offer all kinds of um, mental health counseling services, office-based. Um, so we are, I remind folks, we're office-based as opposed to outpatient. Um, mm. uh, in in the therapy world, There's those are two different things, but... Uh, so we're office-based counselors. Uh, we have therapists who specialize uh, with clients as young as say, 12 or 13, all the way up through adulthood. Um, we do specialize some, some of our folks in addictions, mostly in life issues, depression, anxiety, you know, marital issues. We offer counseling to individuals, families, couples, um, and, and uh, just try to help folks deal with life on life's terms, but uh, sometimes that involves kind of getting over a mountain or two. And so we are here to help. Uh, we are available at newheightscounseling.org is our website. And the okay. uh, uh, phone number that you had given, uh, I think was a masked phone number actually um, from one of the websites that like to generate a, a masked phone number. But our, our phone number is 515-274-9690. 9690. Jim, I, before we let you go, there's something you touched base on, and, and perhaps it's a topic for another show, but in dealing with couples therapy, and there's some fear there, I think, um, of one or both parties in, in, in a partnership, in that seeking out professional uh, guidance, help, uh, answers to questions. Um, sometimes I think the fear is that there may be uh, you may be falling into something called the blame game, right? I mean, is that a topic for a completely different show or well, what? Well, that, that might be a that <laughs> might be a topic that we can dive into, you know, and kind of some of those dynamics of uh, you know, healthy relationships in that regard. But, but I think that it's, you know, you raise a good point. Falling into the blame game because if we have a problem, then somebody has to be at fault. Right. There to, you know what? It's, you know, kind of it's a problem between the two of us. Um, it might be part you, it might be part me, and then it might be the space in between. Um, but I think also part of the fear is like somehow the therapist is going to take one side over the other. There. And, you know, am I going to be told that I'm wrong? And, you know, really our job as therapists is to help folks sort out their own stuff and uh, and just to really kind of offer some, some observations and coaching from the sidelines from our, our experience working with you know, maybe hundreds, maybe even thousands of couples along the way. So it's got to be fascinating work. And Jim, we applaud your, your efforts and certainly your availability on this program. Uh, it's very worthwhile for us. And I know it is for our listeners as well. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. New Heights counseling resources, Jim Wilwording. Uh, he's our boss, noted <laughs> counselor and therapist. I love it. Jim, happy holidays to you and your family. And you too. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Do want to uh, tell each and every one of you that it's a it's an it's a real honor for us to be able to talk to you about this very important topic. For so long, Iowans have not received the, the best um, services, uh, not been provided with all the tools for the toolbox, and some of it is funding, some of it's finance. Uh, and next week, we're going to be talking with. Akeo Abdul Samad about what the state is doing. He's a representative from the 30, 35th district, I do believe. Uh, and he'll be joining us to talk about what the state is doing. Um, he's intimately involved with the black lives matter, uh, uh, movement, 
Um, and I do believe it's a movement. Uh, they're not solving all the problems. In fact, some, some, some problems are being created. Um, you can't disrupt what we consider the status quo and not expect there to be some fallout. There's always going to be fallout. No matter if there's change, there's going to be fallout. Um, but I, I believe that, you know, having the conversation is as important, uh, to our goal, uh, perhaps even more so than anything. We need to have the conversation. It needs to be a part of the daily lexicon of what we discuss. Okay. And that's where you come in. You come in because you listen, you listen at four o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep, or you listen at 10 o'clock when it's time for that last cup of coffee of the morning. Okay. It's easy enough. All you need to do is dial us in every single week and listen to Nick Learhoff and me, uh, and our guests, most importantly, our guests, because they're the ones, they're the experts that can bring truth to what we're talking about. No, I think you hit the nail on the head there. And you know, it's, it's a matter of, of bringing those topics to the surface. It's just much like the expectations and communication between family members during the holidays and being able to overcome that. It's, it's creating an understanding so that everybody can be on the same page and everybody has the same expectations. So that way there's, there's no surprises. There's no, you know, um, un, uh, untraveled, um, you know, explanations or thought process on the things that need to change, well things said. that need to be done differently. So, no, it's pretty amazing that, that we are able to have some of the guests and things on here uh, that we have had. And I'm um, grateful. very, 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 very grateful. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, we're going to have some resources, resources on the web, web website, excuse yeah. me, um, talk therapy, T M H S. So if there's anything that you heard today that maybe, um, you know, hit a chord or, you know, uh, you could relate to and, and some of the things that you're struggling with or the family struggling with, please check out the website. And, uh, if, if you have a loved one that is struggling with substances and maybe they do, need some sort of of residential treatment you can call st gregory recovery centers 888-778-5833 that's 888-778-5833 you can talk to jimmy or myself and we'll try to help point you in the right direction and see if we can help help the loved one as well thank you very much nick folks don't let the holidays become something you dread instead take the steps to prevent the stress and depression that can descend upon you and others during the holidays for all of us St. Gregory's Talk Therapy, The Mental Health Show. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for listening.